Please welcome back. We're moving on to Act 26 of PGSM. Um, this is where Sailor Moon Princess awakens. And even though the costumes were a little different, I was like, where are the Odongo balls? <laughs> Um, Ray and Mako were very, they, it was funny because they said at one point, we have to speak with, to the princess with respect. I don't remember them doing that in the anime. <laughs> um, but then they were like, oh, but she hasn't fully awakened yet. So that was interesting. Um, I didn't love that the generals were so divided and, and the, you know, among their, what they wanted to happen or how they wanted things to go. It kind of warped my image of them just a tid, just a little bit, just a little bit, but not, not enough to really ruin it. But it was just kind of weird to me, I think. Um, I also didn't really like the overwhelming insistence that the silver crystal, uh, destroyed the world and it was it was thought of as a very destructive force and it was bad and there was really no good points to it ever um because i was like wait a minute didn't it save the world it doesn't it also do that but they just really were insistent on that um i will say my respect was a little bit restored with hina uh when she let Mamoru go but then she was like oh but i want you out of japan so I was like, oh, so you want to let him go, but you want him gone, so he can't be with her, right? That's kind of what I think. <laughs> um, there was no airport goodbye, necessarily, really, in this episode, like in the manga, or like, I'm sorry, not the manga, original Sailor Moon, um, but it really wouldn't have fit in this storyline, I don't think. And then, um, you know, just like, you know, Hina was added to just, you know, an, as another layer, another level, and another you know, point of drama and intensity because it really did provide that, at least for me it did. Act 27 was pretty cute because um, this is where Luna became a senshi and uh, see, I always thought Luna was a full grown woman, but in this, in PGSM, she is a little girl and I mean, she's adorable, but you know, it was, it kind of threw me. Um, the four generals do appear to be more portrayed more human uh with flaws and insecurities and you know than you've ever really witnessed or really thought of them to be before so uh, it's interesting to see that in pgsm um human human luna running from the dog and uh running to play with the balls and her transformation is really cute and her little battle with kunzite was just adorable <laughs> Um, yeah, but then at this, at 27, man, you see, uh, Dark Mercury break the Crescent Wand and Sailor Moon's TR breaks as well. It was just like, whoa, what? Like, didn't see that coming. <laughs> so here we go to 28. Um, Amy is coming back on this episode from the dark side. And, uh, from the last episode, I was wondering if, you know, Mamo kind of felt what had happened to Yasagi with the trauma of everything breaking with her battle with Dark Mercury. Um, Kunze playing chess with the girls in the Dark Forest was a nice touch because I was honestly wondering if chess was going to even be introduced into PGSM. So I guess that was that introduction there. So it was kind of cool. Um, the attack Moonlight Attractive Flash was in this episode. So that was cute. Um, I like that the generals are getting uh, much more uh, screen time. And I kind of realize that on to Act 29, um, they really get more backstory and it, but it kind of still irked me because it's like, it's the Catch-22 because Zoisite wants Momo to remember his memories, but he doesn't like the princess. So it's, it's like that tug of war. Like I, yeah, I want you to, but you know, I don't want you with her. It's like... Ooh, he was really good at his insistence. He did not like the princess. Um, Mina's rival at school, I knew she was bad news. And I had my suspicions about who she was or who she was working for. And, uh, yeah, she, oh, I can't stand Mia. This is the Kuroki Mio chick. And she's a new character that we were introduced to on Act 29. Oh, my God. Ooh, don't like her at all. And she comes up a lot. Um, I will say the Luna's attack, I did notice, um, is closer to Rini's attack, uh, cause it's the pink sugar candy. So it was like very interesting how close that was to Rini's attack, I thought. 
so I thought it was kind of like, because see, when they made Luna a, a little girl instead of a full-grown woman, I was like, okay, so are they kind of trying to take, like, Rini's place in PGSN? So when it, her attack was so close to Rini's, I was like, maybe. <laughs> um, moving on to Act 30. Um, uh, 30 is definitely inf kind of infuriating because Mio is a big part of this episode and Yusagi is like literally just wa running into Mio's traps uh, and just, you know, because Mio totally deceives Yusagi and luckily for her, you know, Mina shows up to help her out and, but it's just, Mio is such an infuriating person and that's pretty much this whole episode. Uh, Mio's trying to turn everybody against Yusagi and, you know, Yusagi just being the trusting person she is, she's just like running right into those traps. And it was just, oh my god, it was so crazy and infuriating. And then when Mio gets caught, she starts crying. Her little fake cries. It's like, oh, shut up already. <laughs> it's like, I know. It's like, there's, you know, it's a fine line between being nice and naive. I needed Yusagi to, like, snap out of it. Like, come on, seriously, wake up, girl. <laughs> so 30 was a bit frustrating. Because you're seriously sitting there wondering, okay, why does this Mio chick hate Yusagi so much? Because she has, like, a serious hate for Yusagi. Like, it's real. <laughs> 31 is when Jupiter awakens her senshi powers. And it's such... Uh, a struggle because like you know you do end up kind of feeling you know you love Matoki but you kind of feel bad for him because he likes Mako and she's like dealing with a lot of stuff and you know um you know but he seems to feel better after being turned down by her um which is just wild it was an interesting uh, way that they took it um you know I will say at least PG PGSM uh takes uh, keeps Queen Metalia's moaning to a minimum, which is nice because I always find her moaning <laughs> to be a bit uncomfortable at times. And uh, I think the biggest thing for me on the end of 31 has got to be when there's this really great scene at the end um, with all four of the generals and Mamo. So uh, that's a really cool scene, I think. And then on to 32, Act 32. Um when Mamo came back, but you know, I, it's just, at this point I was getting so frustrated because I was like, oh my God, like everybody, everybody is against Mamo and Yusagi. And you know, but then there's this, another really cool scene where like when Mamo and Indy, you know, called the generals by their names and takes control of the room and transforms to Endymion and y'all, that was a moment, okay? That was a moment for real. And, um, and it's funny because this episode is about Mamoru coming back and it's really funny because I really didn't see that happening. So it kind of really surprised me. Like, I hoped it, but it still surprised me. So it was kind of a cool element. And um, him, you know, him showing up and saving her was just <laughs> magic in the forest. And um, the speech that Mamoru gave her about, you know, he knows that their love can destroy the world but he is choosing not to believe that and I just really love that because it was really an awe kind of moment it was like oh my god yes I think at that point I was just like screaming at the tv remember remember <laughs> and then you know oh here comes Mina and she sees this and she's like destiny cannot be changed it's like no it can't despite how hard you try and then 33, we kind of get, like, an episode of just, like, Amy and Ray, but mainly it's Amy because her mom wants to change schools on her or put her in a different school because, I mean, her grades are great and her mom is still freaking out. That's, like, crazy to me. And just the parental problems that are going on with Ray versus Ami and, um, you know, Ray kind of told Ami what she needed to hear and it was harsh, but, it, you know, it's still kind of the ray that I'm used to. So, I mean, yes, it was harsh, but it was like, oh, okay. But I'm, I don't know. It didn't really jar me that bad. Um, and it was good for Ami to see Ray speak so strongly with her father to kind of give her the boost that she needed to go talk to her mom and, you know, be, you know, tell her mom what she wanted. 
but you really see the climax with Ray's relationship with her father on this episode as well because, like, he slaps her and it's just like, whoa, slap her around the world. It's like, ooh, it's crazy. And Mia was still annoying in this episode, but ultimately the good news is that uh, Mamo and Nusa are finally on their way to their destiny. Then we move on to Act 34. Um, I do really like uh, Zoysite's level of involvement in PGSM. I like how they used him to help end and or Mamo remember. Um, and <laughs> was I the only one that got chills when Mamo told Zoysite, it's useless for you to try and convince me to stay away from the princess? Squee alert! Um, it was good to see Ami and Ray having their little fun bonding moment in this episode. Um, also, you kind of see Motoki um, is more, he, you kind of see the more endearing side of him in, in his quirky way. Um, you, you also kind of see the roughness, again, of Ray and her father with him saying that she's a nuisance because that's, that's an ouch moment. Um, but, you know, I think... Aunt Ami and her mom were kind of in much needed contrast between Ray and her father. Like those were very, con just very different relationships. So it was a good contrast in that respect. Ooh, Act Thirty Five. Here we go. This is another like, oh, Mio, just go away already. Like, oh, she like steps out in front of Mamo's bike and he hits her and she has to take him. He has to take her to the hospital and it was just like she's all crazy. And then you find out she's basically like working for Queen Barrel and it was like I knew it. That's what I thought. And I was just like, oh, I hate this girl. And I don't, and this is also the episode where Sailor Venus and Zoysite are kind of like working together because, you know, he doesn't want his master with the princess and she doesn't want her princess with him, with Indy. And it's like, this is crazy. What is happening? Um, and you see, you see Mina try to put uh, Usagi, like make her forget, like with this box that's, so it's to make her forget about Mamo, but it doesn't work. It doesn't put her fully under. And it makes Mina realize, hey, what am I doing here? And it was just so heartwarming to finally see Mina come to her senses and see Mamo and Nusa be together. But then at the end of this episode, you see that all of the crap that Mina's been going, running around, you see that catch up with her as she collapses on stage during her performance. And I'm gonna leave it at 35 and pick up the next video at 36. So hope you enjoyed. If you did, like and subscribe. Until next time.